In a previous video, we were introduced to the concept of energy by using wealth as a metaphor for energy. In that video, we used a pie chart as a model for how a person's wealth was stored. And in this video, we'll show how we can use a pie chart to track how the energy is stored among the energy storage modes that we learned about in that video. This is the first in our series of videos about energy storage and transfer models. And in this one, we're going to explore pie charts as a way of representing how the energy in a system is stored. Let's take a look at this event here. Take a little time to absorb what's happening. This is a spring-powered dart gun. There's a person's hand pulling back the arming device, and that collapses a spring, squishes a spring down, and then it's released, and then as it's released, it starts to move forward, and that pushes the dart forward, and then the dart speeds up and goes up into the air. Let's think about the energy storage modes that are being employed here. There's a person, that person ate some food, so energy is stored in the like blood sugar, uh, the digested food, so that's chemical energy storage mode. And a spring is compressed, so we can imagine there's elastic energy. The dart begins to move, so that's kinetic energy storage and then the dart begins to fly up into the air farther away from the Earth's surface, which increases gravitational energy storage. Let's break it down into four snapshots and track the energy storage in each of those four situations. First of all, before anything happens with the gun, the energy, all the energy in this situation is stored as chemical energy in the person that's going to arm the gun. Then the spring is pulled back, and if we look at the spring, we can see that its relaxed position up here has now been compressed down to a much shorter position. So when you squish something squishy, like a spring, you store energy in the change you've made to that spring. So our pie chart now is no longer just one big circle full of chemical energy. Now some of the energy that was stored as chemical energy in the person has been transferred to elastic energy in the spring. So uh, elastic energy pi wedge shows up here, which decreases the amount of energy that was stored as chemical energy. Next, the person lets go of the spring and the gun begins to fire. You can see that the spring is now a little bit more relaxed than it used to be, which means there's not quite as much energy stored as elastic like there was before. So the size of the elastic pi has shrunk. The dart also began to move. So that means that we now have some energy stored as kinetic energy, energy stored in the motion of the dart. That's represented by the green slice here, which takes place of part of the elastic energy. The orange pie slice that represents chemical energy has not changed because this person is no longer expending any energy once they've armed the spring. Next, the dart has completely left the gun. The spring is now completely relaxed and unwound so there's no energy stored as elastic energy and all the energy that was stored as elastic is now either kinetic or gravitational. So EG that stands for gravitational that's the energy that's stored in the fact that the dart is now going farther away from the center of the earth. So as the dart rises away from the surface of the earth it stores more and more EG. It will begin to slow down from here on out and EK will get, begin to get smaller and smaller as it gets higher and higher in the air. There will be no elastic anymore, and E-chem doesn't change because the person still hasn't exerted any more energy. Let's put these all together in sequence. At first, all the energy is stored as E-chem in the blood sugar of the person who's doing the action here. Then, as that person arms the spring, some of the E-chem becomes stored as elastic energy. After that, the elastic begins to transform to kinetic, and it loses elastic as the spring unwinds, and then finally, when the spring is completely unwound and the dart has left the gun and began to rise through the air, gravitational energy begins to increase and kinetic energy begins to decrease. Let's apply this to a new situation. Here's a family sliding down a hill. At first they aren't moving, then they're speeding down the hill and at the bottom they're going even faster, but they're lower at the bottom of the hill. 
I want you to think about what energy storage modes would be present at positions one and two and three and try and draw a pie chart for those three situations. Well, here's what I find. At one, they're in a high position, so there would be a lot of EG. There's a family there. They all have eaten food, probably. And so there's some energy stored as chemical energy in the family as well. They aren't moving yet, so there's no kinetic energy. At position two, they are now moving, and they're lower down the hill. So now we get a wedge of EK, kinetic energy, and the EG, gravitational energy wedge, has shrunk a little bit. The family isn't exerting any work as they go down the hill, and so the E chem slice stays just the same. At position three, they are now at the bottom of the hill, so EG has dropped to zero, and all of the original EG has been replaced with EK because the sled is now moving faster than it ever has been before, and it's as low as it's ever going to be. E chem still hasn't changed because the family still isn't exerting any energy because they're just going down a hill. Hopefully this short look at using pie charts to model the energy storage and the different modes of energy storage that we learned about will give you a springboard to being able to apply this energy analysis to new situations that you'll encounter.